Hello students, welcome to Sarah's Biology, another video where we are going to extend our discussion from class 12th as we are going on with human reproduction. Up till now, we have seen structural organization of male and female reproductive system, followed it up with gametogenesis. Now, very important concept, in case of human female, they have got a characteristic cycle called as menstrual cycle, which repeats itself after 28 days or a month. So, we will try and look into the various aspects of menstrual cycle, how it is carried out and what are the different factors that contributes to it. So, let us begin talking about the most important component of this chapter, the menstrual cycle. This cycle is interplay of various hormone. A part of that, the endometrium and the ovary also plays its role. So, we will try and understand this cycle according to the various concepts involved in it. But broadly, we will read it under this four heads, menstrual phase, follicular phase, ovulation and luteal phase. This 28 days may be divided under this four sub phases. In this, we will try to look at the various changes like how the thickness of uterine layer or endometrium changes, how follicle growth continues, the change in the level of ovarian hormone and also the change in the level of hormone released from the pituitary or what we call as gonadotropin, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. As I have already described, menstrual cycle, the word menstrual is derived from menses which means a month. So, the four sub phases we are going to divide the zero phase. Let us take one day when bleeding start as the zero day. So, zero day to fifth day, it is the bleeding phase that we call as menstrual phase. Sixth to thirteenth day, the follicle continues to grow, develop and formed a mature graphene follicle. So, that comes under follicular phase. Because of the change in the level of hormones, especially luteinizing hormone and even FSH, the release of secondary oocyte from graphene follicle, that marks the ovulation and it lies at the mid of the cycle, that means around 14th day. As soon as the secondary oocyte is released, the graphene follicle now is converted into corpus luteum which takes the endocrine role and how these changes goes on that will read in the last phase called as luteal phase which continues from 15 to 28 days. Before we move further, let us have a look at the initiation of menstrual cycle which we call as menarche. In female, it starts at the age of around 11 to 12 years. The menstruation starts at the age of around 12 and continues to 45 to 50 year and the third component, the third part, the menopause in the female reproductive life cycle, 45 to 50 years, the cessation of menstrual cycle takes place. So, this is how a female undergoes the reproductive cycle. Let us have a look at the first phase, the endometrial changes. Every female finds few days in a month as a compromising day. Why? Because it results in discharge of blood, serous, fluid, mucosal fragment from the vagina. Because in case of no fertilization, the endometrial lining is no longer needed it starts breaking 
and that mark starts off menstrual phase very important for every female to track it and the hygiene the sexual hygiene during this phase is paramount use of sanitary pads are most advisable you might have seen the movie padman that is wholly dedicated towards improvement of sanitary and uh, sexual hygiene during menstruation that can save you from lot of diseases especially stds and other infections so this continues for 0 to 5th day or 3 to 5 day the volume of bleeding might be 75 to 100 ml including the mucosal fragment and the serous fluid then the period from 7th to 9 days after the bleeding phase that marks the follicular phase what happens at this level the ovarian hormones they decreases as a result of increase in gonadotropin gonadotropins one which is released from uh, anterior pituitary as a result of gnrh secretion from hypothalamus so now under influence of these gonadotropin the granulosa cell as you can find here out the primary follicles around 6 to 10 follicles that starts increasing in size but only one will develop as graafian follicle so the granulosa cells they start secreting estrogen and small quantity of inhibin right so in presence of fsh and estrogen the granulosa cell develops lh receptor what happens here out lh receptors why because it is anticipating menstruation uh, ovulation it is anticipating ovulation because lh receptors will catch hold of lh which will cause ovulation so the period from 5th day or maybe you can start 6th day to 13th day that you can count as follicular phase that marks development of follicle from primary follicle to secondary follicle secondary follicle to tertiary follicle and as you know that whenever a secondary follicle converts into tertiary tertiary follicle there is a characteristic antrum arises so that is fluid filled cavity and then these tertiary follicle develops into graafian follicle or matured follicle the 14th day is very very important it is because under influence of luteinizing hormone you will notice here out the lh value goes up by 6 to 10 times which is called as lh surge so you can find here out the lh surge and even fsh increases so this causes this lh surge that causes rupturing of the graafian follicle and release of secondary oocyte at this stage as we have already seen in gametogenesis the secondary oocyte is released follicular cells remains inside so this is very important and as you can find out here a green window is being depicted from around 13th day to around 17th day this is the most fertile period or fertile window in female reproductive cycle the chances of fertilization are very very high actually a female can track whether ovulation has taken place or not by checking the quality of cervical mucus cervical mucus if it is dry and sticky it's not the ovulation period if it starts coming wet and watery the mucus is wet and watery ovulation may be nearing if the cervical mucus is uh, creamy that means ovulation is very very near and when it is wet stretchy and if you take it out it gives a thread like appearance when you stick it between your uh, two finger spinner barkett test is like that only so that indicates ovulation this is also important indicator next phase after ovulation the 
cells present in the graphene follicle, the follicular cells, that is now converted into luteal cells. Right? The whole structure is converted into corpus luteum. At this time, the endometrial cell becomes thick and secretory. Why? Because it is anticipating fertilization. If fertilization takes place, the embryonic development will start and implantation is the next important event. So, to anticipate implantation, the endometrial cells becomes thick. It also starts secreting the thickness around 5 to 6 millimeter. At this level, the luteinizing hormone causes growth of corpus luteum. So, under influence of LH, corpus luteum grows and it starts secreting progesterone and this progesterone helps in increasing the thickness of endometrial cells. The follicular cells are converted into lutein cells because of inclusion of uh, yellow uh, lipid like uh, lipid substances that is why it is also called as yellow body. What if no fertilization takes place? The body is thoroughly prepared for that also. So, in absence of fertilization, high progesterone level because progesterone secretion is going on by the corpus luteum also and also little bit of inhibition secretion. The GNH production is inhibited. GNRH, GNRH from hypothalamus that is inhibited. So, it is a feedback as we have seen in case of uh, regulation of gametogenesis. Now, as a result, the level of LH and FSH falls. Luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone. Why? Because the hypothalamus has reduced the secretion of GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone. So, gonadotropins will also fall and subsequently the corpus luteum also starts degenerating and then it forms corpus albicans. Progesterone level will also go down. So, what is the result? What is the consequence? The consequence is now the thicker layer of endometrium is no longer needed and it starts breaking. So, it marks starts of a next menstrual cycle. So, complete event from one bleeding to another that is called as menstrual cycle. As I have already mentioned, the change in hormonal level, as you can find out here, the level of uh, gonadotropins, FSH and LH, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, during the menstrual period, you see the level gradually increases and it peaks at around 14th day to anticipate ovulation. Whereas, the level of estrogen and progesterone, the ovarian hormone, that goes down during the bleeding phase. It builds up slowly. As you can find out, estrogen builds up just prior to, because follicular cells now start secreting estrogen. Why? Because that is important so that the follicular cells might develop receptor for LH. And post ovulation, you see the progesterone level increases. Why it increases? Because even the corpus luteum starts secreting progesterone and it also pulls the level of estrogen. But in absence of fertilization, the level goes back down again, which results in start of menstruation or the bleeding. So, we have seen the different components. Now, let us see the complete picture. So, before we see, let us summarize the change in hormone level. You should remember, under influence of GnRH, the anterior pituitary that releases FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. What are the functions? It stimulates the growth of follicle in the ovaries and also secretion of estrogen from developing follicular cells. This result in development of LH receptors in the follicular cells. The next important hormone, luteinizing hormone, 
the increased value of LH causes ovulation and it also results in conversion of graphene follicle into corpus luteum. Ovaries in the meantime also serves dual function, endocrine role and production of gamete. So in case of endocrine role, it secretes two hormone, estrogen. So the role of estrogen is to thicken the uterine lining and inhibit FSH and LH. It stimulates FSH and LH release pre-ovulation and the progesterone, the sole function is to thicken the uterine lining to anticipate implantation. It inhibits production of FSH and LH. So these are the various change in the level of hormone. Now let us see the complete picture. Here we have included the change in uh, uterine thickness, the change in ovarian hormone, the change in the hormone from anterior pituitary, even included one more component change in body temperature because right at evolution the body temperature rises by around 1 degree and then the follicular changes in the ovary. So you can very well correlate. Let us divide it into certain sub phases. You can see here out during the bleeding or menstrual phase the level of ovarian hormone is also low. The anterior pituitary hormone that starts increasing a bit, body temperatures remains constant at around 36 degrees. Follicular growth takes place by addition of more follicular cells, layer and thecal cell, so that primary follicle is converted into secondary follicle. In the luteal phase, sorry, in the follicular phase, the follicular development continues. The level of uh, LH and FSH also increases, level of estrogen increases, little bit progesterone level also increases and building up of endometrium takes place to anticipate fertilization. At around uh, 14th day, the LH level increases 6 to 10 times which is called as LH surge. That causes release of secondary oocyte from the graphene follicle. FSH level also increases by 2 to 3 times and now after this, this graphene follicle converts into corpus luteum which starts secreting progesterone. So you can find here out level of progesterone also goes up and level of estrogen is also on the higher side. But if the fertilization does not take place, the GnRH falls down, it causes decrease in secretion of gonadotropin and now the corpus luteum is converted into corpus albicans and the progesterone level also falls down, estrogen level also falls down, FSH and LH also level goes at lower side and now the breaking of the endometrial wall, release of dead ovum or oocyte along with mucus. So that marks the start of next cycle. This is the complete picture. You can collate that with the diagram given in your NCIT book. So majorly there are two main phases, follicular phase and luteal phase, but we can read ovulatory phase and the menstruation also. So you must be in a position to draw it and use these components, the level of hormones, the change in endometrium and change in the follicular development. So the complete picture, we have seen how after menstruation there is a build up in the endometrial lining and it is also corresponding to the increase in size of the follicles from primary follicle to secondary follicle, from secondary follicle to tertiary follicle, from tertiary follicle to graphene follicle. Ovulation takes place and at that time the level of gonadotropin is very very high. Normally we use a word LH surge, increase in the level of LH 6 to 10 times and also the FSH goes by 2 to 3 times. Post ovulation, the scenario has already been explained, 
the graphene follicle is converted into corpus luteum which takes the endocrine role and starts secreting progesterone there is a build up of endometrial wall but how long it anticipates fertilization but in the absence of fertilization the thing goes on a lower side there is a decrease in gnrh because inhibin and progesterone they give feedback to the hypothalamus and pituitary as well as a result the regression of endometrial lining starts and that marks the start of new cycle so i am very sure this must have been made clear let us have a look at some questions from the board examination explain the changes that occur in ovary and uterus during menstrual cycle in human female mention the influence of pituitary and ovarian hormone in bringing these changes so in case you need to answer such question you can make a tabular presentation like this menstrual phase what happens in ovary the corpus luteum regenerates follicular development begins in case of uterus in absence of fertilization menstrual flow occurs due to breakdown of endometrial lining of uterus the follicular phase and the luteal phase so this is along with the marking scheme so very important for all of you to write exactly as per the demand of question second question draw a schematic diagram of menstrual cycle showing changes in the uterine wall corresponding to change in the ovarian and pituitary hormone so as i have mentioned this diagram is asked generally more than once so you can make this diagram you continue practicing this that will help you to explain and also help you in building your understanding so that was all so that was all from uh, today's uh, scheduled uh, topic the menstrual cycle and i'm very sure you must have got comprehensive understanding of the various events keep reading enhance your understanding in case of any doubt you can write in the comment box or you can send us mail your queries will be answered till then take care bye bye students keep ahead of your friend by subscribing the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified if there is a new video coming your way